RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Through the years, new inventions have speeded the wheels of progress. But today, Phil Harris slows them down to a grinding halt. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. Alice will tell you, I'm pretty handy around the house. Now, like if a light bulb goes, they call for old Phil, and I screw in a new bulb. But if a radio or TV set goes on the blink, don't nobody call for Phil, because you need an expert like my friend here. Warren Charles. Well, it just doesn't pay to tinker around with an expensive instrument like your radio or TV set, Phil. It costs less in the long run to call for a qualified local serviceman. He has the technical knowledge and the required test equipment to help him do the job right. And here's another hint. Look for the serviceman in your neighborhood who features RCA tubes in his service work. They're the finest tubes money can buy, and yet they cost you no more. There you are, folks. The word of an expert. When your radio or TV set breaks down, have your local serviceman fix it with dependable RCA tubes for best results. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Last week, Phil called Mr. Scott of RCA Victor and told him he was coming down to see him about the renewal of his radio contract for next year. As we look in, Phil and Elliot are in Mr. Scott's outer office waiting to see him. Hey, Curly, I think Mr. Scott is treating you shabbily. He's got a lot of nerve making you wait in a reception room like this. After all, you're a big man. You're the star of his radio show, and he shouldn't keep you waiting so long. It hasn't been so long. We've only been here three days. (laughs) And three nights. I'm getting tired of camping out here. It's not only embarrassing, it's uncomfortable, too. Oh, it isn't that bad. You just may... Hey, what time is it? Uh, 10 a.m. Ooh, it's getting late. We better get out of these sleeping bags and shave. (laughs) We gotta look neat, you know. He might see us today. I know he's in the office, and I guarantee he's gonna see us sometime. What makes you so sure? Well, I'll prove it to you by his secretary. Um... Miss Livingston, is there any other entrance to Mr. Scott's office besides this one? No, there isn't. You see, we got him trapped. (laughs) He has to come out sometime. Yes, Mr. Scott? Miss Livingston, are they still out there? (laughs) Yes, sir. Oh, no. I can't stand much more of this. I haven't seen my wife and children for three days. I haven't touched food since Tuesday. I've been living on old blotters and art gum erasers. <laughs> I even missed Dragnet last night. <laughs> I wonder if Sergeant Friday got his man. <laughs> now, Miss Livingston, does Harris look like he's weakening? No, sir. He woke up fresh as a daisy this morning. What's he doing now? He's scrambling eggs over a can of Sterno. <laughs> Do you think you can steal an egg for me? Well, oh, never mind. I can't stand it any longer. I'll see him. Send him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Scott, we'll see you now, Mr. Harris. Tell him we don't want to see him. That big crook trying to steal an egg from us. <laughs> we'll see him. We'll see him. That's what we're waiting for. I can't wait to ask him if he's going to pick up my option for next year. You know something, Elliot? Maybe hmm? if I ask him real nice... Curly. And... You're not going to go in and beg for your job, are you? Of course not. Hmm. I'll be independent. I'm going to open that door to his office and walk right up to him on my knees like this. And I'm going to take... Yeah, and then you'll look him right square in the belt buckle and tell him off. (laughs) Curly, don't go crawling in. Don't let him think you're anxious for the job. Keep him guessing. Keep him guessing, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's go in. Uh... Good morning, Mr. Scott. Good morning, Harris. Mr. Scott, what has six legs and flies? What's that for? You told me to keep him guessing. (laughs) 
No, 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 Curly. I mean, be non-committal. When he talks to you, don't say yes right away. Show him you're not too interested. Just say, maybe. Okay. Uh, will you two stop muttering and get down to business? Now, what's on your mind, Harris? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's a nice, stupid start. <laughs> Shall we go on from here? What did you want to see me about? Oh, uh, Mr. Scott, it's about my contract. I hear that you want to renew my radio show for next year. Where did you hear that? <laughs> a little birdie told me. Next time you see that birdie, kick him in the pin feathers. <laughs> He's lying to you. Uh, oh, you're just kidding me, Mr. Scott. You know something? You're a smart businessman, and you won't let me go. Only a dope would miss the chance to sign Phil Harris for next year. And one thing about you, sir, you're not a dope. No, who told you that? He does that good, don't he? <laughs> Look, Mr. Scott, I'm not going to beat around the bush any longer. I want just one answer. You want me for next year? Not particularly. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Scott, I want this job, but I'm not going to beg. I'll give you an ultimatum. What kind of an ultimatum? You sign me up for next year or I'll kill myself. <laughs> now, what's your answer? Uh, can I have a little time to think it over? It has possibilities that I'd love to explore. <laughs> now, please, Mr. Scott, don't toy with me. Look, I'm a man with a family. Now, I gotta know if I'm gonna be working next year or not. Now, calm down, Harris, calm down. Your radio show has been renewed for next year, and you can thank the RCA Victor Board of Directors. It was their suggestion. Well, bless their long-playing bankrolls. <laughs> now, uh, will you please sign the contract, Harris? I'm having the board of directors over to my home for dinner tonight, and I want to show them that I carried out their ridiculous suggestion. Yes, sir, I'll sign it all right. Yes, sir. By the way, Mr. Scott, I don't like to mention this, but I've been with you for three years, and I'd like to talk to you about my salary. Uh, what about it? I'd like to get one this year. <laughs> now, why do you need a salary, Harris? You know whenever you need money, you come to us and we give it to you. Like the time your wife needed $3 for a new iron, we gave you the money. <laughs> and when you told us your children had holes in their shoes and needed a new pair, you didn't have any trouble with us. As soon as our investigators saw the holes, we gave you the money. <laughs> oh, you're very kind to my family, sir, but it's very degrading to me personally. Every time I buy a new suit, I have to take the board of directors along to okay the price. It's very embarrassing to get a fitting of Jim Clinton's with all them guys feeling the material. <laughs> Well, uh, Harris, perhaps we'd give you a salary if you showed more interest in the company, like our other employees. They're always making suggestions for the improvement of our products. That's why our products are tough. Oh, we know that, don't we, Elliot? Oh, yeah. RCA Victor makes the best tops in the country. <laughs> they spin good. All right. <laughs> Mr. Scott, maybe I have been a little negligent, but I assure you that from now on, I'm going to do nothing but think of ways to help RCA Victor. Come on, Elliot. We got a lot of work to do. So long, Mr. Scott. So long, Mr. Scott. Where are we going, Curly? We're going home and figure out some way to keep our sponsor, and I think I know just the way to do it. Yeah? I'm going to record a hit tune for him, and I've got just the tune. Come on, Elliot. I'll sing it for you on the way home. Oh, good. <laughs> Look at them shuffling, shuffling down, a rambling, scrambling ahead of the town, hustling, bustling, buzzing around, happily awaiting at the station. Oh, look at the train, the number 709, puffing and a puffing and arriving on time. Who do you think's about to arrive? The band they call the Dixieland Five. They're going to play that muskrat ramble tune, the way you never, ever heard it played. So get ready for the big P ray. All together now, one and two. Come on and join a happy throng. Feel the beat, 
to that ramble and scramble and muskrat song. Come on and ramble along. Shuffling the shuffling down. A look at the band parading all over the town. A look at the happiness of going around. Everybody's up and celebrating. Oh, look at that drummer entertaining the gang. Clinging and the clanging with the bing and the bang. Changing the town from dead to alive. The band they call the Dixieland Five. They're going to play that muskrat ramble tune. You better get your reservation planned. In person for the one night stand. All together now, one and two. Come on to join the happy throng. Feel the beat of that scuffle and ruffle and muskrat song. Come on and ramble along. Hey, Elliot. Yeah? We're home, man. Gee whiz, it's good to be home again after three days. Poor Alice. I bet she's been lonesome without me. Come on, let's get in the house. All right. Hey, Alice. The love of your life is here, darling. Leave two quarts and a pint of cream, dear. <laughs> oh, I gotta buy her a cow. <laughs> what kind of talk is that, Alice? It's me. It's your husband. Oh, I knew it was you, Phil. I'm only kidding. How did you make out with Mr. Scott? What kind of a contract did you sign? Just one of the best. I got everything just the way I wanted it. Did you get a raise? Oh, yeah. Next year, he's allowed to buy a suit with two pair of pants. <laughs> with options for a vest. All right. Oh. Well, aren't they ever going to give you a salary? Now, honey, don't worry. Mr. Scott said they might consider it if I showed a little more interest in the company and came up with some ideas for him. I'd give anything in the world if I could think of something, just something. Hey, honey, why don't you speak to my brother, William? He always has such good ideas. You mean Wee Willie Fay, the inventor of the fiberglass tuning fork? <laughs> he couldn't think of a way to get oh, out Alice, of... Alice, Alice, oh, I couldn't wait to get over here to tell you the good news. Guess what happened to me? Your oatmeal cookies won first prize in the bake-off. <laughs> Don't be a Weisenheimer. I've invented something. You invented something, Willie? In this box is one of the greatest inventions of all times. I've invented a portable ice-making machine. Ooh, isn't that peachy? <laughs> Why don't you stop, Willie? They've already got an ice-making machine. It's called a Dairy Queen. It makes them cones with the curl on top. They're delicious, and they uh, keep... No, coming no, uh, no, no, Philip. My machine makes ice cubes. I don't care what your... Ma ice cubes? <laughs> Doc, you just struck a nerve. <laughs> Elliot, this boy's starting to make sense. Why, yes. This is the kind of an item that our hot little breaths have melted quite a few... Oh. Yes. <laughs> hey, Willie... Did you say that this machine is portable? Hey, that's right, sis. And you don't need electricity or gas to run it. This machine contains a secret chemical compound. When you push this lever, a chemical reaction takes place which causes ice cubes to be formed. Amazing. <laughs> Astounding. How many cubes will this little machine make, Willie? Uh, well, there's enough chemical compound in here now to make over 100,000 cubes. Just think, Philip, 100,000 ice cubes. You know what that means? Sure. 
Let's see. At 10 cubes to a nice pack, you got a cure for over 10,000 hangovers. Oh, I should have known better than to talk to you. Come, Alice, let's go into the other room and I'll explain it to you. Um, I'm going to take this machine to RCA and let them put it on the market as a home appliance. You know he's got something there, Curly? Certainly I know, I know. Here I am looking for an idea for RCA, and that little twerp comes in with it. I wish I had the brains to think of something like this. Curly, you underestimate yourself. You have more brains than Willie. You can invent a machine just like that one and bring it to RCA before he does. How? Steal his. <laughs> I'm not going to steal anything from him. All I want to do is to get rid of him so I can borrow his machine. <laughs> get rid of him, huh? If I could only get him drafted. I like that. I know a way I can make him think he's drafted. Hand me that phone. Yeah. Operator. Oh, uh, operator, there's... Seems to be something wrong with my phone. Would you ring me back, please? Very well, sir. Hang up, please. What are you doing that for, Curly? Don't you get it? When the operator calls back, the extension phone in the living room will ring, yeah. and when Willie answers it, I'll tell him it's his draft board call. <laughs> Good. Hey, make it sound urgent, Curly. Tell him he's got to come down right away so he'll leave his invention here. Just leave it to me. Sure. Hello? Hello? Hello, uh, is Mr. William Fay there? Speaking. Who is this? This is your draft board. Where have you been, you naughty boy? <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean, where have I been? I didn't receive any notice to report to my draft board. You didn't? Goodness, you must feel neglected. <laughs> but don't you fret. If you'll come down here right now, we'll make it up for you. Well, if it's my time... I'll be glad to go. Stout fellow. I'll get down here right away. Yes, sir. It worked, Tucker, like a charm. Shall we go on and see Willie off? Let's go on. Willie, hey, Willie, where are you? I want to talk to you about this... Uh... I don't have time now, Philip. I have to leave. Where are you going? I just received a call from my draft board, and I have to get down there right away. No. You mean you've been called to the colors? I can't believe it. How can you act so surprised when you were the one who... Shut up! <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Willie. Too bad we didn't know about this sooner or we would have thrown a party to see you all. Well, it's too late for that now, honey, so let's just sing him off. Go ahead, Alice. You start. All right. I hear singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are bare All day long I seem to walk on air I wonder why, I wonder why I keep tossing in my sleep at night And what's more, I lost my appetite Stars that used to twinkle in the skies are twinkling my eyes, I wonder why. You don't need analyzing, it is not so surprising that you feel very strange but nice. Your heart goes pitter patter, we know just what's the matter because we've been there once or twice. Put your head on our shoulder, you need someone who's older. I rub down with a velvet glove There is nothing you can take To relieve that pleasant ache You're not sick, you're just in love I don't hear singing and there's, there's no one there so I you smell blossoms and the trees nice. are bare All day long I seem to walk you know, on air I matter. wonder why, we've been I wonder once or twice. why I keep tossing in shoulder. my sleep at night older. And what's more, I lost my appetite 
there is not that when you to twinkle in the sky, there's a twinkling in my eye. Just in love, we're just, we're just in love. You know, Alice, while you were singing, I've been thinking. Yeah? You know something? It's a shame. Willie comes up with this wonderful ice machine he was going to take to RCA Victor, and now it's just going to sit there and rot. Yes, yes, it does seem it. Hey, I've got an idea, Phil. Why don't you take it over to RCA for him? Alice, that's a splendid suggestion. <laughs> you know something that never occurred to me? I'm going to do it right now. Mr. Scott's having the board of directors over to his house for dinner, and then they can all see it. Oh, good. And by the way, Willie left the blueprints of the machine with me. I'll go upstairs and get them. Yeah, you do that, honey. <laughs> she goes along good with a gag. Oh, it's a lot easier than I thought. <laughs> hey, Curly, let's get the machine over to Mr. Scott's house. Wait till he sees these little ice cubes come pouring out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do we know that the ice cubes come pouring out, pouring out? <laughs> we never saw this thing work. We better test it before we take it over. I don't want to make a fool of myself when I get there. Okay, let's test it. Hey, Curly, what's this little pail for? Right there? Yeah. Well, it must be to catch the ice cubes. That's yeah, cute. <laughs> Let's see now. Willie said to turn it on, you push a lever down. Uh-oh, here's the lever. I'll push it down, shall I? Yeah, go ahead, push. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Here it started. Yeah. I don't see no ice cubes coming out. <laughs> well, maybe it takes a little time. Yeah, you know, no, I see what's wrong, Curly. It's vibrating and the lid on top is loose. It keeps jumping up and down. Yeah, that must be it. This thing is probably supposed to be airtight, huh? Must be. I got an idea. I'll just sit on the lid and hold it down. You get up there. Right. There. <laughs> hey, that did it. There goes my first ice cube. <laughs> Another one, yeah. boy, Curly. Ain't it coming out faster now? Yeah. Anybody home? I bring the clock. Oh, no. Now he's laying cold storage yet. <laughs> There's no limit to this guy's talent. All right, turn it off, Ellie. Yeah, all right, all right. Look, Julius, these ain't eggs. They're ice cubes. He's laying ice cubes? <laughs> Well, every man to his own trade. Julius, will you please don't... Don't apologize. If that's what you do best, keep at it. <laughs> After all, this is a very limited field. Mr. Harris, did you go to college to learn this, or does it come naturally? Will you just be quiet, please? I know I'm a jerk for asking this, but what's that thing you're sitting on? What's in it? Ice cubes. You're sitting on ice cubes? <laughs> This guy gets headaches in the darndest place. <laughs> Julius, this happens to be a new invention. It's a nice making machine. Oh, Phil. Honey, here are the blueprints. Oh, good. Now, these will show Mr. Scott and the board of directors just how the machine works. Thanks, honey. Come on, Elliot. Let's get this machine over to Mr. Scott's house. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, Julius, have you got your delivery truck with you? Yeah, why? Well, we can use it to cart the machine over to Mr. Scott's house. Come on, help us carry it out to your truck. <laughs> Harris, what's the idea of bursting into my house like this? I signed your contract. Why don't you go away and leave me alone already? <laughs> Mr. Scott, you're going to thank me for bursting in on you. I came here with an invention that... You invented something? What is it? A non-skid bar rail? <laughs> no. Make a note of that, Elliot. <laughs> Mr. Scott, this is a nice cube-making machine. And wait till your board of directors sees this work. Now, please, Harris, my board of directors are inside having dinner, and I don't want to disturb them. Oh, no, no, we won't disturb them. They can keep on eating while I demonstrate. Julius, carry the machine over and put it on the table in front of the dining room. Right. Harris, Harris, Look, you... you're going to thank me for this, Mr. Scott. Elliot, yeah. open the dining room doors. We're right. ready. Gentlemen, uh, your attention, please. Now, gentlemen, I have here a machine that makes 100,000 ice cubes. But 
Look, rather than talk about it, I'll let you see it work. Julius, when we turn the machine on, you keep counting and show Mr. Scott, huh? Right. All right, Elliot. Start the machine. Okay, Curly. <laughs> One, two, three, four. How about that, Mr. Scott? Five, Watch it work. Six, well, I'll be done. Seven, Ice cubes eight, are coming out. Nine, Why, Harris, this ten, is a great invention. Eleven, Elliot, twelve, you can turn it off now. RCA 13, will certainly 14, be interested in seeing. 15, uh, Elliot, I said 15, you could turn it off now. 17, I got a message for you, Scotty. 19, what? 20, when I forced the lever down to turn it on, it snapped, and I can't turn it off. <laughs> But you've got to turn it off. Ice cubes are starting to pour into the dining room. Harris, do something. I'm trying, I'm trying. Harris, Harris, haven't you found some way to shut that machine off yet? Oh, this is terrible. Ice all over the place. My poor board of directors, look at them. I think they look nice in case the ice. <laughs> They're all frozen stiff like statues. Look at that one with his coffee cup halfway up to his mouth. <laughs> I like the one who's about to light a cigar. Will you idiots do something? My house is being ruined. It can't take much more. My dining room, living room, kitchen, and den are filled with ice. Well, don't get excited. You still got two bedrooms and a half a bathroom to go. Keep count, Julius. We may set a record tonight. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Whether you're an old salt who likes to set sail or a landlubber who likes to be on the go, the perfect radio for you is the yachtsman the newest of RCA Victor's famous portable radios. It's great going with the Yachtsman, the smallest three-way portable ever made by RCA Victor. Carry it wherever you go, from town to country or from room to room. But don't let its small size fool you. The tone you get from the Yachtsman is big and full. That's because the Yachtsman has RCA Victor's exclusive golden throat tone system, the perfected balance of amplifier, speaker, and cabinet. The Yachtsman operates on batteries and also on AC or DC current. So it's ideal as a second radio around the house, too. Plug it in and listen while you work or play. Let the kids enjoy it in their own room. Keep it on your bedside table. It's handsome enough to fit in anywhere. The Yachtsman comes in a choice of four color combinations. Its durable plastic case can take lots of travel wear and still look bright as new. Drop into your RCA Victor dealers and see the Yachtsman, the newest portable radio by RCA Victor, world leader in radio. Folks, this is Phil again. The summer months are here and you'll all be out on the road, driving to the beach or to the mountains. Drive carefully, no matter where you go, and you'll be sure to make the return trip. One careless moment can mean years of regret. It can result in your death or the death of your loved ones. Don't speed or try to beat out the other fella. Take a tip from the guys who spend most of their time on the highway, the professional truck drivers. They know that a little courtesy on the road can pay big dividends in lives saved. Don't be in a hurry to get where you're going. It may take you a little longer to get there, but you'll get there. Thanks, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed were Janet Waldo and Gail Gordon. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. No matter what size or make of portable radio you own, remember it's only as good as its batteries. So be sure your portable runs on batteries that have been specially designed for radio operation. RCA batteries. The best way to make sure is to do business with the expert who knows radios inside and out, your local radio service dealer. When your radio needs new batteries, be sure to have your local dealer install the batteries that have been engineered for longer listening hours. RCA Radio Batteries. You'll want to listen to three years of Korea on NBC.